So I'm part of the National Agency for Spatial Planning. We have published a 2019 report on land data about Kenya, Tanzania, South Sudan, Uganda, South Africa, Namibia, and Senegal, which will continue in 2023 with Botswana and Zambia also. The objective of Land Portal is to develop SOLI for 12 African countries between now and next year, 2024. Although the SOLI reports are the product of independent research, this is only the first stage for land data. The Open Up Guide for Land Governance is a tool for national and local government agencies with a mandate for or an interest in making their land governance data open and available for others to reuse. The guide is the result of a collaboration between the Land Portal Foundation and Open Data Charter. To mark the new publication, the Land Portal has convened this panel to discuss key questions and issues that have emerged in land data and information. A few additional logistical notes about the webinar before beginning. I just wanted to say that it is organized as a dynamic conversation with our panelists, panelists who I want to thank. So it is a dynamic conversation to get more insights into these initiatives. We will have a few rounds of questions with our panelists. And then the audience will have the opportunity to participate by asking your questions. For the questions, it's very simple. Please use the Q&A button. the panelists will answer so that we can get as much information as possible. Let me introduce to you the lineup of speakers that we have for today from Land Portal and all the different organizations. Uh, thank you for organizing this webinar. It is an honor to have with us today the Director of Spatial Planning of the National Agency of the National Agency for Spe Spatial Planning, sorry. This is Umu Kalsum Kule Sek, who participates in the planning of this same national agency. Then we have Abdu Karim Mbenge, head of the National Observatory of Territories. Next up is Charles Tom Bayer, project leader of the Open Up Guide project in Senegal and co-leader of the open data work at the at Land Portal. Natalia Carfi will also speak. She is the executive director of the Open Data Charter and Open Government Partnership Steering Committee, who has also worked on the production of this report on Senegal. We also have with us Dr. Labali Ture, Soli Senegal researcher. So first of all, the director of ANAT is going to speak. Considering the amount of time that we have, we would like um, the director to give some pointers, some introductory remarks. Mr. Director General, the floor is yours to give us the general introductory remarks. 
Mr. Gigo, if you're available, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Mr. Angom, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to give some introductory remarks. I am part of the National Plan for Territorial Planning and Development. I would like to thank the Land Portal for their collaboration with the with Anat in the framework of this webinar. And thank you also to all the people who are participating in this panel, including my dear friend Labali Touré. The National Plan for Territorial Planning and Development, validated by His Excellency Mr. Maki Sal, President of the Republic, during the Presidential Council on Territorial Planning held on January 24th, 2020 and approved by decree number 2022-843 of April 12th, 2022. Analyzes territorial information, taking into account land information as a determining factor for good land governance. Land data is a crucial point of our national plan. And indeed, with regards to the new orientations of public policies, the mastery of territorial information is a mandatory condition for establishing credible territorial policies that produce results. Information is at the beginning, diagnosis and development of strategies and also at the end of territorial action and largely determines its chances of success and results. In Senegal, poor mastery of territorial information is reflected among other things in a poor command of the dimensions of geographical structuring of community space, a toponymy that is sometimes confused and not standardized, poor mastery and sharing of geographic information, poor mastery of decentralization texts, which results in confusion about missions and prerogatives, the absence of a territorial information system, especially on the actors and their interventions, and the absence of a system for monitoring and evaluating territorial action. Given the role and place of territorial information and the low level of knowledge of the territories to guide development choices, it is necessary to promote the production, updating and sharing of territorial information, particularly land information. It seems like we have a connection problem. Hello. Hello. Sorry, I lost my, my connection broke. Yeah, no problem, continue. So the different actions recommended are the production of updated geographic reference, the 
the implementation of geographic information that meets meets the needs of development actors and promotes the implementation of geographic information systems. Senegal has a national system for public statistics. This system is the National Statistic Agency and Demographics, and these institutions produce data for the various bodies. Senegal, however, the problem with this system in Senegal is that it is not centralized and doesn't facilitate access to data, particularly for strategic and territorial planning purposes. It is also necessary to rethink the system to include local authorities. There are also key data users that exercise specific functions and provide services. The next step is establishing an appropriate legal framework for pooling, sharing, and using territorial information. Access to information is not easy for all users, and legal frameworks must be put in place for the sharing and use of information. This can be achieved by setting up a single platform that allows useful information to be published in standardized formats, such as on the National Territorial Observatory, to enable the planning and sustainable development of territories. This will facilitate regulated access to information according to the needs of each user. Regulation and standardization of toponymy. Toponymy concerns the transcription of place names but also to create a system for territorial entities throughout the national territory. It is important to establish a uniform addressing system at the national level to push into place a sustainable development of the territory as established by the January law. The digital platform is an interactive web mapping application that will be accessible to the public. The census system for all citizens with a specific address allows us to access all information regarding occupation of space, public buildings, but also the people and institutions who risk accountability for tax. The process, process of putting into place uh, this system and telecommunication system is in progress. The observatory of is attempting to collect data from the territory and following development and monitoring policies that takes into account the decision of all stakeholders. We are accountable to law 2021-04 of 12th of January 2021, bearing orientation for the planning and sustainable development of territories in Article 30. There is also a law from 6th of August 2022. There is an interactive system accessible to the public which shows all maps and prospects to carry out. In this framework, PNADT is carrying out dynamic mapping and monitoring indicators. 
as well as the execution of queries for spatial analysis purpose and the download of maps and data. This device contributes to give a new breath to land use planning in Senegal because it accompanies the process of granting the location visa, decree number 2022-1088 of May 5th, 2022, for coherence in the occupation of space. It is a kind of certificate of territorial coherence. We have been involved in each of these actions and we pay special attention to the implementation of these actions. We are committed with Land Portal to continue with this reflection. I wish you a successful webinar and a good day to all participants. Thank you. Thank you very much for this detailed, exhaustive summary, Mr. Jigo, particularly regarding the legal documents and the technical aspects. What is important is that you said that information is in the beginning and in the end a success of policies. That is the interest of information, particularly of land data. So you have overcome all the shortcomings of weakness of information in order for a production and updating of this information about the territory. So thank you again, Mr. Jigo. We're going to move on to the next part of our discussion now. DG. Now all the other panelists are going to participate. I don't know if um, Charles Tom is ready, is available. Charles, you led the work on land data and you recently published the results for Senegal. Would you like to speak to us a little bit about your experiences in Senegal? Charles, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you, Carter. Um, and, and thank you also for the, the remarks by the Director General. I think it was very interesting um, and it's very exciting to hear that so much is happening in Senegal at the moment. And this is, of course, why this partnership with the government of Senegal and ANAT is so exciting. So let me briefly provide an, an overview of the results. And I just want to remind our viewers that the reports that you see there are available uh, on the Land Portal website for download for more detailed investigation into the results. What we can say that in terms of responsible land governance, and, and I think the Director General reflected some of these key points already, but the problem that many countries face is how to improve land governance in the face of these com competing demands for resources. And responsible land governance is the way we use and control land in a way that is socially legitimate and democratic. And the lack of responsible governments has a range of negative consequences, which I won't go into detail, but which have already been mentioned as well. So in order to exercise responsible land governance, we require data and information. This access to information is crucial for achieving good land governance and to be able to open up land related data can help to democratize that information ecosystem 
and strengthen the flow of information from all perspectives and all levels. And I think this can address some of the problems and make the governance of land more democratic, more socially just. And the state of land information and the open up guide are, are tools to assist in the opening up of this information. Just briefly in terms of how we have implemented the process in Senegal at the moment is through two phases and we've been dealing with phase one, which is really mapping the information ecosystem and conducting an assessment of the openness of those resources. And that allows us to understand and describe the state of land information in Senegal in light of the existing policy environment. So what are the findings um, for Senegal with regards to how land data is government governed? I think very interestingly, if we look at the data governance framework in Senegal, we see that there is a strong enabling framework for developing an access to information regime. This includes the international obligations that Senegal already has, as well as its constitutional commitments and a data protection act. So in terms of international instruments, um, Senegal has already signed a lot of commitments. Um, at the national level, there are some instruments that are under development, including an open access law. And this is part of Senegal's OGP commitments for 2023. Um, there is also already an existing data protection act. But together, these frameworks that are in existence can start serving as the basis for an operational framework for data sharing and increase data availability, because that is an area that Senegal is still lacking in. So Senegal has signed um, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the African Charter, and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights all of which provide for access to information as, as a right. And if the ATI law is implemented, it really starts providing a solid underlying operational framework for Senegal. Now, the way we assess the open data in Senegal is to look at openness against 10 open data criteria across six categories of data. So we look at land policy data, we look at land tenure data, we look at land use data, we look at land development data and land value data. And these data categories are derived from the framework for land administration because these are the land related services that people are expected to deliver. And it is important to note here that in assessing the data for openness, we don't just look at data that is public. We look at 10 components of which publishing data online is only one component. And, and this is something that I want to emphasize because in a number of situations, um, countries are publishing data, making that data available and putting it online. But this is not the same as saying that the data is available as open data. We look at whether it is machine readable. Um, what is the license regime if there is a license provided? Is the data downloadable? Um, how comprehensive is the metadata? Uh, we look at uniform resource identifiers and these 10 criteria together determine the openness of data. So when we look at the results for Senegal, I think it's important that we keep this in mind because there might be some data that is considered to be available and it's online, but in this assessment, it would not necessarily be considered as fully open data. So what were the results for Senegal? If you look at this graphic, we can see that 
legal and policy data is considered to be partially open, open in Senegal. And there's also a range of other land data types that are partially open. While land development data was only considered to be a little bit open. The land development data largely relates to the land development plans that are published by um, ANAT and made available on its website and its portal, but they are often um, as PDFs and as plans, so not very open. And that is a little bit of one of the reasons for the slightly lower score. In terms of land tenure data, land use data, and land value data, we can say that there is some data available, but it is typically not open and not online, although it is there, it does exist digitally within government departments. So this also presents opportunities for making the data more open. And in conclusion, I would just like to say that perhaps what is needed in, in the way forward is, is to look at an open land data roadmap for Senegal, where we can use the results from the SOLI baseline and the open up guide to draw up a, a roadmap with stakeholders and with ANAT as the leading partner to set out categories of data that could be opened up through, in some cases, purely technical refinement. And I think this would already achieve quite positive impacts for Senegal in terms of improving the openness of data. So with that, I would like to, um, at this point, hand over to, to Kader and uh, just maybe reflect very quickly on, I think there is an interest and an awareness about open data and a demand for open data uh, in Senegal. While there are some gaps, I think good progress is being made in terms of putting data online and making data available. And I think if you look at the statistical agency and the work they have done, there is clearly also quite a lot of capacity in Senegal with regards to open data and opening up of land data. So thank you. Thank you, Carter. Thanks a lot for... So apparently we think that um, we see that uh, land data are not uh, fully open yet, but there's a lot of hope here. I followed this uh, uh, presentation. So I see there's a big uh, opening wheel. I see there are a lot of progress making. And what you said, and uh, DT said that in Senegal we have a low project for what is about uh, data access. And that, for me, um, a lot of hope to improve uh, data and land data access. So I think we we'll can insight it uh, later. I see there's a lot of question. So um, Umu and Abdu, the Umu and Abdu with uh, um, land data in Senegal. How are they useful in Senegal? And what does it mean for Senegal? That uh, in Africa, um, land data are more open and more guaranteed for people regarding those uh, data who are just published. Are you online? Yes, we are. Then, Yumu, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, my dear Kader. I thank uh, Mr. Jigo and every panelist and participant. So thanks for the question, Kader. And thank, thank you for Cal for the presentation about uh, land data sharing in Senegal. So regarding this study, 
for the cartographic showing data. And there's an opening of uh, data produced by the agency. Those data, most of all, are relative to geodesy. So there's a call to just produce like geographical data, good mastering of administration um, brings uh, less uh, land conflicts and that stop collectical collective territory to give uh, more land than they than they can and about analysis of data and sectorial land so there are uh, land data about terrest uh, land data about the subterranean or electrical data and about uh, telecom telecommunication data also socio-economical data and um, educational rights so those data are only part of um, the one who produce them they are shared thanks to convention they are only published under the ANA AMAP, but they, are, they cannot be shared it's you need the, the right to the pro data producer so that's why it's important to have a better land data sharing thanks to the next law and that will help us a lot to have more auto um, and uh, data sharing thanks uh, Kader. so that's a bit succinct thanks a lot Umu. that's uh, illustrative enough because it was short difference between data produced by ANAT and those who are not uh, produced by it but shared by it so it's a structure who produced it and responsible if yes or not so it's all about uh, maintenance and um, land data sharing so i think abdu will speak Absu is responsible for um, land can you hear me yeah i can hear you so the floor is yours thanks a lot kader so i join you Umu. So, hello everyone. Thanks, Kader, for this great presentation. Introduction. So, we just saw the case of Senegal and this analysis has great points. What's about uh, land data changes and with the opening data politic so with all the data who are produced in those land uh, plan change so the ANAT uh, makes available those data uh, more and more since uh, 2008 
and they are all available on the portal Geo and also uh, on our portal to uh, have all the all those portals available and they are open. However, However, there's always obstacles at the political level, particularly a poor mastery of information. So all state structures that produce um, these statistics don't have accuracy, which means that a good part of the data produced comes from ANAT. So the aim is to push the governments to adopt these new policies of data exchange to make data accessible to all stakeholders. Another negative um, point is the lack of territorial information systems, uh, because today the idea is to connect the data directly to commune, to councils. Today, if we have territorial information about these councils, these districts, we would be able to aggregate all this information, integrate it and treat it centrally. In order to overcome all these shortcomings, the state is putting in place mechanisms to, to remove these gaps because our organization is a framework and a model for the collection and sharing of territorial of land data. We can give more um, information about the mission of the of our organization during the discussion, but I wanted to present these um, these points after Charles his presentation. Thank you very much. That's the situation. It's not fantastic because, as our colleague said, access to data is quite difficult. Nevertheless, I see that there is hope because of the observatory, which has been put into place. And this will contribute to accessibility of all this information. Thank you very much, Abdu, for your presentation, which is really relevant. I'm going to uh, turn to Nati now. Nati, why is measuring openness important and how should stakeholders interpret the results presented in the SOLI? Thank you very much, Kader. Here I am. Um, and thanks everybody for putting uh, together this, this seminar. Um, so, Understanding the state of the art of where government data is as far as openness is very important in order to develop an open data policy that actually addresses the challenges that are being found. Um, the Open Data Charter, the organization that I lead, has been working with tools like the Open Up Guides on different themes around the world. And uh, when we performed these open data assessments uh, worldwide, we have found that in most cases, there is a lot more digitized, digitized data or digitalized data than expected. But the thing is that that data is not open following uh, what Tommy actually explained. Um, so data is digitized, but it's not being uh, fully open or fully shared with, with citizens. So there's, there's a, um, a good expectation that data can be open rather, rather quickly. Um, we have found that understanding and, and having a picture of where um, of the data sets and, and the different organizations within government that actually create that data is very important for different things. So one of them is that any open data policy in order to be successful actually needs to have a participatory approach to it. It's very important to understand the different areas of government that are creating data because it's not always just one office. There's always one office that leads a theme, but there's always um, data that is being created and collected by different ministries that actually can help with, with in this case, land, land data understanding. Um, also, it's very important to connect with data reusers to understand the data demand 
we know that opening up data, it's not easy, it's not cheap, it, uh, it takes on resources, both human and, and monetary resources. So understanding the data and demand side of the, of the open data policy is very important so that once the, the, the opening of the data starts, uh, the government is actually responding to the demand side of data. And you can guarantee that that data is going to be reused because just opening up the data is not enough. Uh, the government needs to promote also data reuse. So if you connect data creation with data demand from the get-go, from the very design of the open data policy, you will be uh, guaranteeing that that data is actually going to be reused uh, and prioritized participatorily. And then one other thing that we, we found out throughout the implementations of the Open Up Guide and Open Up Guides worldwide, and in this case in, in Senegal, is that uh, doing this exercise of, of understanding and mapping out uh, the different data sets has also helped create um, what we call people interoperability. We connect different actors that haven't been speaking to each other inside of government and from government with civil society and academia. So creating that open data community that can actually help promote the open data policy, both from the publication to the data reuse side is very important. Connecting the people that are working within the field uh, is very important for a successful open uh, data policy. So uh, that picture that you might say that you get when you create this, um, this mapping of open data is very important to set the stage for that conversation uh, with a multi-stakeholder forum of, of people around the open data policy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nathalie, for the very relevant information you just shared with us. It's important to satisfy information sharing and especially to understand the context that exists in each country before speaking about new public policies or improving data policies. We must see what exists already. And this does allow us to understand this context. The other point that was interesting is that this enables a sharing of experience where we can learn from each other. Thank you very much, Nati, for your input. I'm going to turn now to Labali. Dear colleague, given the initiatives on open data in Senegal, particularly those of the government and OGP, how important is open land data for researchers and civil society? And how can open land data become a priority for the government in the support of service delivery? I'm asking the country because you're a researcher and I guess you're the right person to ask this question. So please go ahead. Thank you very much, Kader. Thank you, everybody. I'm very happy to participate on this panel, especially as the co-author of this report on Senegal. I am delighted to share this space with you. The question is very important, and I think that in Senegal, the problem isn't the production of data. It's the operational aspect. We created the National Geomatics Plan in Senegal, and it allows the establishment of Senegalese geospatial data infrastructure, which is a strategic tool to promote the control of territorial resources, the sharing of knowledge, and the optimization of territorial development. However, the problem is the development of the initiative. And that was my problem as a researcher. There are certain points that are fundamental for research. When we talk about land data, I refer mainly to data regardless of the topic that can be led by different um, experts, whether they are lawyers, biologists, whatever. We all 
address the question of land data. But the problem for us is knowing what has been done by who, how and when. We receive many reports, but often it's difficult to access this information. So the data exists, but the level of sharing and access is very weak. That means that for research and civil society, which can all, which also has the obligation to access and improve data. We have to distinguish land data from land information. Data is the objective, but information is the starting point. A researcher can help with the right mechanisms and documents to make progress with claims and can help to create trustworthy, reliable uh, data. And that's what I think we really need to reflect upon. Can the data that exists today, can it be made accessible to the scientific community in general? Because they are used in a standard that allow us to access this information. Because usually it's civil society and researchers that carry out this, that organize this data, this information. So we have access to data, but not to the most important data. I think that today, having taken a step back, I think that there is a need to look at the mechanisms that exist today and what isn't working. We can create millions of platforms, but they are useless if the people who create them are not aware of the potential of data. What is the point of having a project worth millions if there isn't any access to the information it provides? It is only useful if civil society can reuse this data for other projects. So that's what we need to solve when it comes to land information at the national, regional and continental level. So Kadir, I think that in Senegal, at least, um, there's a problem with the law, but there are there are mechanisms. But there's also a problem with the format of data. Because it's one thing to share data, but under what format will we share it? Which, which format should we send the data in? What kind of file? What kind of document? That's important too, and that's what the GICC has partly um, solved, but unfortunately it, there is still a lot of shortcomings in terms of the creation of data. If we allow openness for civil society and research, we will obtain a lot more land information in Senegal. That would be my answer to that question. Thank you very much, Lamy. I see one thing coming up all often, which is the lack of access to land data. I think every person who has intervened today has highlight, highlighted this point, this lack of information. To take what Labali said, it is essential to transform data into accessible formats. This goes for researchers and civil society alike, but also for public decision makers in order to improve public policy. Thank you very much.
we have many different questions and um, we're looking at them but i'd like to before moving on to the questions I would like to know the progress made by Senegal regarding land data in particular. As I said earlier, the point that keeps coming back is the lack of access and difficult access. But the discussions on open land data in Senegal continue to develop and evolve. With this renewed focus on open land data, a key question that is emerging is what more can Senegal do to open data for both government and society. Umu Kalsum, you have the floor. Thank you. I think Dr. Labali uh, partly responded to this point because he spoke about Senegal's implementation of a national plan. The geomatic plan was the result of a partnership with geospatial data producers. The problem now, as he said, is the meeting of the commitments that were part of this geomatic plan, because the national plan should enable the implementation of geospatial infrastructure in Senegal with a strategic approach that is based on the sharing of information and which can improve the development of the territory because this is a process and everything is connected. So to carry out this process, we need a framework. Anat is involved in GCCCC and in other land data products, such as Senum, with many partners and some other projects as well. And that should uh, uh, enable the, pro the development of many different projects based on this sharing of information. So more than the actual data, it is important to share information in all sectors of our activities. And Karim said earlier that there is a lack of sharing. There is some accessibility. There is a, a link on the ANAT website, actually, which leads to GeoPortal, where there is a sharing of data produced by the, this institution as to dec decision makers. The state is the first user of data because adequate information sharing allows for land prospects and even social planning. Decentralization has meant that certain collectives have to take responsibility for territorial management and space management. This would enable decent land governance. These data are necessary for the for territorial planning. So today what we need to do is to create common paths for the development of this information as well as departmental knowledge sharing. that should benefit these territorial collectives. It would also improve land governance. The private sector, civil society, researchers, universities are also stakeholders uh, which will benefit from the opening of land data. So how can we contextualize this to see how each stakeholder can access and benefit from this data, from these, this information, and which will be the sharing system and which will be the format for data sharing. That is, um, Kader, what I can respond. Thank you, Mu. 
it seems like all stakeholders are interested in land data. We're talking about civil society, researchers, the private sector, universities, governments, etc. But as you know, regardless of who the stakeholders are, the problem remains um, the taxing of information. So that's a general point that has been emphasized. But generally, I see a series of points that we must assess. We have a series of um, questions coming up that address some of you directly. I'm going to turn to Charles again. Charles, when we, it comes to sharing land information in Senegal and its evolution and progress, sometimes we see announcements, mechanisms, structures, platforms, which are put into place or which should be put in place. Which ones would be of interest for open land data? What can Senegal do to open up more land data and information for governments and civil society? Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Kader. I, I think, I think Omo referred to an important point um, just before this. And she said that the sharing of data and information is a process. And, and I want to emphasize that because I think it, it sounds simplistic, but I think that is what Senegal needs to continue to do, to continue on this journey, to continue with this process. And I'm just going to very briefly highlight uh, some, some, some key issues that are important for going forward. One, it's to utilize the existing open data capacity in Senegal that exists within ANSD and ANAT. It is there. And I think that that is a very good starting point, a very good foundation. The second aspect is not to collect more data, that is of course important, but to improve the openness of the data that has already been collected. And I think Lavalli also emphasized that there is already quite a lot of data that can be made more available, that can be made more open. A third point would be about improving the availability of spatial data and not only statistical data. And that means releasing some of the data that is contained in these development plans in GIS ready formats. Um, another aspect is to improve the metadata of existing data and also to harness existing initiatives that relate to land titling, to agricultural reform in Senegal to introduce the discussion on open data and making that data in these initiatives available and public as part of the thinking right from the beginning. And then of course, something that Senegal is already working on is continuing to refine its policy and legislative uh, framework. Uh, there is a Data Privacy Act or Data Protection Act. There is work being done on an open access law. And I think these initiatives need to continue. And then finally, and I think there was a workshop in Senegal towards the end of last year as well, and I will emphasize this again, come up with an open data roadmap, schedule and plan out um, in a very concrete fashion, some key steps that can be achieved going forward. And I think ANAT would be a good organization, for example, to lead such an activity, identify some categories of data that can be made open and, and work along identifying some gaps, some challenges, some best practices, uh, some standards, and, and continue on, I think, a, a very good journey that Senegal has already started. I'll, I'll leave you with that, Kader. Thank you, Charles. Thanks a lot, Charles. 
So yeah, the existing existing structures like the ANAT as well as the ANAT, the NSD, National Statistical Agencies. So mechanism existing. So now we are in a formulation and um, in a phase to have all of those data open widely for public. So I think we are on time. Okay. So now Abdul Karim regarding the uh, land uh, data and attribution where do you see uh, realized progress to uh, make land data more accessible thank you Kader for this question like you see, for a National Observatory of Territories, the state of Senegal uh, has placed it with a certain number of missions. The first was to be a decision-making tool, but also a collect and spreading and sharing uh, territorial data. So there was um, a rotation law. The law 21.4, the act of uh, rule. So this brings and shows the shows uh, the interest uh, of uh, state of Senegal to these subjects. So there was an act from uh, president on it. So the first mission is to follow the um, territorial change, making more easy the sharing of data for every stakeholder. So, like you know, like uh, Mr. Labritour said it, difficulty today is when um, those data online, how can they be more spread and more accessible? So there was there were some regional committees of piloting in different regions of Senegal to bring those data from from the government uh, parts to other people. So those committees will be governed by, will be ruled by governors, and um, for cadastre people, members were not, uh, and for the state of Senegal. So there are some initiatives who are going on. And so it was uh, planned to have a, a land uh, uh, committee. And there were some places. And so the objective of INF is to focus on land. And it was to focus on uh, land politic. So that's for today. But juridic uh, and that's it 
Merci beaucoup. Pour Sénégal. Merci Thanks beaucoup. A lot. Merci beaucoup à vous. Donc, Thanks a lot to everyone. I see that observatory will make a national collect for data. So what I remember is not only for collecting, it's also for uh, data spreading. So it will be here for the accessibility of data. Thanks a lot, Karim. I'm back to Nati. Nati, are you here? Yes, here I am. Nati, so at the beginning of the movement of opening of data, how those data uh, contribute, or how this movement uh, can contribute the equity in uh, land data, and that's uh, part of a uh, territory of data in Senegal. So, what do you think about it, Nati? Thank you very much for for that question. Um, you cannot change what you don't know. So having land data can help make informed decisions that change the reality into a more equal one. Um, open data can help promote informed participations of, of citizens and better understand the challenges that they are facing. Uh, open data is also critical to promote accountability so that citizens can actually understand what governments are doing and the public policies that are being implemented in this regard. But, to actually unlock public value of, of governmental data, capacity building and data literacy are going to be critical to actually work on equity so that everyone can actually use and understand the data that is being published and it's not left out to technicians to be able to reuse that data. Uh, data reuse is a critical moment of the life of data. So understanding the demand uh, once again, I'm going to repeat it over and over again, but understanding the demand of data is critical. Um, and then I just wanted to connect this, this process, as Tommy said, the, like the step forward, <laughs> uh, the steps forward. I wanted to connect this process forward for Senegal, which I know there, there's a lot of, of, of things to, to do. Um, unfortunately, everybody here is, is moving forward with that agenda, is to better connect this process with the OGP process so that it can be a real participatory process of co-creation between government and civil society organizations and an international commitment on moving forward this agenda together. Also connecting data creation with data reuse and uh, actually promoting uh, the enhancement of the open data community in, in Senegal. Thank you very much. Merci, merci, Nati. Je crois que c'est. Thank you very much, Nati. I think uh, that's clear. Equity is important. Land data needs to be made much clearer in order for us to have a much more encouraging context to work in. La Bali. Yeah, Kader. Labali naturally as a defender of open data, who can benefit from land information and how can we improve the ecosystem of land data? Because this is essential in terms of making this information accessible. I think that uh, this panel today is actually a good starting point for solutions. These kind of conversations are crucial in order to spread awareness about the importance of land data. Because often people aren't ready to share data out of ignorance. 
But if we do things intelligently, we can create mechanisms and tools that allow the exchange and sharing of data. This exchange today and research is happening, but often people keep their data. We forget that um, we're not going to become richer by keeping our data for ourselves, but that we actually enrich everyone by sharing. I think that today, the sharing of land data and open data will allow a set of stakeholders to make progress through reliable data, because public data is not accurate. We shouldn't decide on the about a territory unless we have very accurate data. You know, we're talking about very general data. This kind of data won't help us to make decisions. We need to create a very accurate level. That's why open data will allow stakeholders, researchers, civil society to improve. But I also want to talk about the private sector because state departments publishes data at a certain level. But more and more, we see uh, the emergence of private structures who are producing data quite frequently at a different level. Are, so, the, so open data does not necessarily mean data created by public services. We are talking about different types of stakeholders who are producing data. We're talking about data producers with quite limited restrictions and rights. So that's why when I talk about land information, all the data that was created about COVID, what did we do with this? At one point, it was enough for researchers to have access to this data in order to be able to make progress faster. So we need to learn to do the same thing in different projects that have a common thread. We are not capitalizing what has been done. Everyone uses their own data and keeps it a secret, forgetting that sharing is enriching ourselves. Sharing is helping to make decisions. Sharing is giving the other the opportunity to create something that you are not able to create. So this is about communication, about sharing, about showing people that data is the objective. Information is available. But in order to create data, we need information. So we need to help our states to create reliable data. For me, research today comes from civil society, the private sector and the state together. They need, we need to continue to spread awareness and to show the relevance of open data. Today, many countries are working on this issue particularly because data is already available, but they're not shared. Everyone collects data based on the standard that that particular person likes. It is essential for me, for any project, especially a territorial project, to talk about land data. So there needs to be a uh, awareness spreading in Senegal, in the civ in civil society, that will benefit everyone. It will lead us to produce this kind of data and to be more open about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. I um, think there are two very important points that you just made. One about information being available, and the other is about a, is that when we share, we enrich ourselves, we become wealthier. Those are two lessons learned from your speech. 
if information is not shared, there we waste time. We have agencies doing the same thing, doubling down on doubling over on work that has already been done. And in the end, this data isn't actually available. So we're going to begin the third round with Umu. Earlier, we spoke about the question of who are who should open data work for? So I'm going to start with Umu. How can open data contribute to the situation in Senegal, to the alleviation of land governance in Senegal? So we're talking about accessibility to data. Umu, you have the floor. Hi, Umu, sorry to, uh, to interrupt here. I just quickly want to say I've been uh, informed by the technical support group that we should um, restrict our answers to a one and a half minute final statement because we only have 10 minutes left. Um, so just to let you know about that, please. Thank you. Thank you. Donc, je vais y aller très, très rapidement. Allez, Oumu. So, I'll be really quick. Go on. So, really, really quickly. To answer the question, opening data, um, let uh, this language um, shared for a small scale, also for governance, land governance, territorial governance, a good and social strategic planification, a situation security for investment, productive investment that, so that brings those investments a better knowledge of the land let a, a better currents in the space and superposition of rights will be avoided. And thanks a lot, Kader. Kader, uh, your mic is close. Okay, thank you, Umu. I said it was uh, synthetic and clear now. I will avoid the synthesis because time is flying. Abdu, what the importance of open land data for investment in the land sector and how that answer this objective? Thanks a lot, Kader. So the uh, sharing of uh, land data is now uh, really important and crucial for uh, the politics, uh, like in elaborations of strategy. We need those data, and also at the end of the process, uh, consideration we need uh, that has that has need to be collected before and after so uh, like with a good uh, land territorial politic we have good observations and that allows us to have good sharing of data it will um, let us be aware of the impact of politics on also on demography so it will allow us to take better decisions however we need to fix uh, more rules on investment 
realizations of those goals, um, it will allow all actors, stakeholders like um, investors or study people to have a better access on land data. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Abdou. So on what said Abdi, uh, what was said is sharing. So like sharing is getting uh, richer. So to share is really important for land governance. Nabali, Nabali, keeping in mind those responses, how do you see open data serving researcher um, question on society and bringing options for inter international issues? Thanks a lot, Kader. We're all okay saying that research is a determinant for our country. It brings a lot of knowledge. It's moving forward. Um, it's also let us have innovations. And the fact that research is aware of those data can uh, let the data is more uh, and better evaluated. A simple example for the, so it's, it's fruit with uh, collaboration with research. For stakeholder, we can have tools who uh, take into account local realities. But nowadays, that's what uh, we still need. And research. Research is permanent. So research goes um, even both uh, projects. And so uh, for public data, it's important to take into account that uh, land data, um, people are working with researchers to um, for the capitalization of data and what we deal with it for also local governments and for public politic uh, research that was one of the biggest mistakes was to disconnect uh, research from uh, the um, local projects because um, research is uh, like one of the most important part of the process. That's that's it, Kader. Thanks a lot. Yeah, um, I totally agree. We have to uh, to let it at the center of. So what I I see is like in these years there are some research uh, institute. So it's more and more. Uh, like it. So uh, it's implemented more and more. So Nati, I see that Odyssey emphasized uh, which opportunity do you see? How countries, depositories of data can uh, think to exploit those opportunities.
Thank you very much. I know we have just a, a couple of minutes, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be super brief. I think it is very important to understand the public problem that we're trying to tackle with opening up of the data. As we already know from the open data community that the idea that uh, publish and then they will come, like the data users will come, has already been proven wrong. Um, they won't come if the demand of the data is not being met. Uh, but also it's very important to understand that open data policies also mean working on cultural change within government and within um, citizens, because it's to understand that the data that is being created by government actually belongs to the citizens. And, uh, and so cultural change can take time and that's why data literacy is very important. The work that has already been done in the implementation of the open app guide is a very important first step towards a great direction. Uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward towards um, the future of the Senegal land portal policy. Okay, Nati. Okay, okay. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Okay, Nati. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So you emphasize this important point. We already saw that. Regarding this um, data and collecting researches and um, because um, everyone is looking for the data, but it's already found. So it's about pertinence of sharing. Charles, Charles, come. Charles, come. <laughs> So some percentage of the countries answer and the public implementation and uh, meanwhile some think that open data uh, can be a problem how to um, bring together those propositions that uh, normally seem uh, not the same. Hello, Charles. I thank you very much. I, I think um, seeing as we have just got about 30 seconds left, what I can say is that um, the a lot of the data is not personal data intensive and, and the problems of um, privacy, it's not an open data problem, it's a data management problem, it's a data governance problem. But I think Senegal, through also this process and all the initiatives that we have seen in Senegal is well on its way to this process that Nati referred to, um, which is about, a, about trust. I, I call it a creating trust, trust between government and citizens, trust about how data is used. And I think opening up data uh, is a process and it's a process and a conversation that is designed to generate trust. Trust in the data and trust in how it is used. And I think looking at what we have done here today, we are well on the way, I think, in, in that process. And I actually look forward to continuing this level of engagement and this level of, of stakeholders and, and, and webinar participation and engagement, because I think that is really the, the right track. And so I, I see I see a lot of opportunities um, in front in front of us here. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Charles. Thanks a lot, Charles. The access uh, data problem is not only Senegal or Senegalese, but it's worldwide. It's a big. Uh, problem I can see everywhere between uh, government and people. So now to conclude, uh, it was constated that uh, we will see just few of uh, land that I was were public. 
les prochaines étapes critiques possibles que l'on vous. Alors, ça, c'est une question ouverte hein, à, aux différents panélistes. That's an open question for the different panelists. If somebody wants to answer, please take the floor. I think um, one interesting point is mutualization and synergy among stakeholders. There was a legal case led by GICC, but it is necessary to have a legal process that contextualizes the whole situation about spread and stocking of data. That would allow, enable the definition of the geographic conditions, the respect of authors, so that would allow uh, mutualization and synergy among stakeholders and users of data. Thank you. Thank you, Kadir. Thank you very much, Umu. Okay, Labali, Charles, Abdou. If you have anything to add before I move on to the different questions that we have planned. Well, Kadir, I don't know if you're reading the messages, but they're saying we should stop and just uh, thank everyone for coming first because we're over time. Um, we just have to have a look at the messages. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Kadir. Because we were supposed to finish at half past two, now it's half 34 past. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all this content in the report and the same for the question. So I'm sure we'll have the opportunity to respond to these different questions that are being asked. Thank you very much. I see that there is a huge amount of diversity of stakeholders, participants. I saw technical people, land experts, researchers, academics, public administration, etc. So thank you to all participants, uh, particularly our panelists and the technical team that dedicated part of their time to organizing this webinar. So once again, thank you and see you next time. Bye. Merci beaucoup, au revoir.